a really significant fact to me is, so why did he kick everybody out of the Oval Office? Why would you kick the Attorney General, the President, the Chief of Staff out to talk to me if it was about something else? And so that, that to me, is a, as an investigator, is a very significant fact. It's not obstruction of justice. It's not even particularly close. It, it is, in, a, in my view, inappropriate for some of these things to have been said if they were said. But we have to distinguish between what is a crime or what's impeachable and what is bad form. You know, you don't get indicted or impeached because you're, you know, clueless or because you're rude or because you say unguarded, ill-advised things. Jonathan Turley writing earlier, you can talk like Tony Soprano and not be Tony Soprano. Uh, one look at the James Comey testimony and one element of that. Let's bring in our panel. Guy Benson, political editor at townhall.com. Molly Hemingway, senior editor at The Federalist. Caitlin Collins, White House correspondent for The Daily Caller. And Olivier Knox, Yahoo News chief Washington correspondent. Okay, Guy, thoughts? Well, I don't think you can spin today as a good day for the White House, right? You have the former FBI director calling the president directly a liar, uh, heavily suggesting that the special counsel is looking into obstruction of justice now, which would involve the president, and also Comey characterized this request or this ask uh, where the president allegedly said that he hoped that Flynn would be essentially let off the hook. Uh, he called that, in his own mind, a directive. So uh, that's a rough day down at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. But I do think at the same time, several of the major narratives from the anti-Trump left sustained significant body blows from Comey's own testimony that the president was in fact told three times by the FBI director that he was not under investigation, that uh, Trump did not interfere with the Russia investigation and in fact supported it, and a few others. So I think if you're a Trump supporter, you have some things to hang your hat on today. But to me, the ultimate question is going to come back to why was Comey fired? We haven't gotten a good or consistent answer from the White House, and that remains an open question. Caitlin, the White House, uh, President Trump, silent today on Twitter. Complete silence. This is the longest Donald Trump has gone without tweeting since he became president. And if he makes it till tomorrow morning, as the Washington Post pointed out, it'll be the longest since he declared that he was running for president. This is not normal. They've completely stayed silent. And, Donald, and James Comey made all these allegations against Donald Trump today, calling him a liar, saying he defamed him, defamed the FBI, interfered with an investigation, fired him because of the Russia investigation. And the only person who can contest that is Donald Trump. And we haven't heard anything from him except a statement from his lawyer. Yeah. Molly. Well, it is funny how much people seem to want Donald Trump to tweet. But I do think, actually, there was a lot that Donald Trump could be happy about today. Uh, it didn't really change your opinion on Donald Trump if you thought he was reckless. You definitely felt that way after the Comey testimony. We did get a picture that his intense dislike of Comey was rooted in the fact that the FBI was willing to leak, or in some cases, some rare cases, formally release information about literally everything except the one thing that was really important that the whole nation has been subjected to for month after month, which is Donald Trump is not the subject of an investigation in collusion. And that's where this all began. We were led to believe for so long, that's what the hysteria has all been about, that Donald Trump is an agent of Russia sitting in the, in the White House, and yet now we're discussing whether this was a directive or whether you say hope is a bad thing and whatnot. I mean, that's a major come down from what we were starting out with. So uh, the president was not live tweeting, but his son was live tweeting, and Donald Trump Jr. appeared on Sean Hannity's show earlier. This is the head of the Federal Bureau of Investigations. The head of the FBI goes on, well, if I was a stronger man, I mean, who are we kidding, Sean? I mean, what kind of response <laughs> is that? Pathetic. I mean, this guy's that the head so of the FBI, and that's his response? Not, hey, maybe I should follow the law and procedure and say that Trump was doing this. Maybe I should let him know that this was happening. But instead, he decides to do this. Then he leaks some notes to a friend of his because he doesn't have the guts to do it himself. He has to leak it through a friend of I mean, where does this stop? I mean, it is nuts. The leaking thing, Olivier, really raised some eyebrows in Washington. It did, absolutely. Um, it, it raised a lot of eyebrows because the parallel conversation to whether or not Russia um, interfered in the election, whether or not they had, there was collusion with the Trump campaign, there's been a parallel conversation about how are we getting all this information and why are there so many classified leaks uh, of information. 
It's the, it, the question is, why did he do it? And he s answers that question. The, in the why day. is the most striking? It's not the leak itself. D.C. Is a, is a city of leaks. The why was really striking when he says that he, he did it explicitly in order to uh, to advance the possibility of a special counsel being appointed. That was that was extremely notable in today's testimony. So John Roberts is reporting that the White House um, is going to request the DOJ look at this and um, and see if this is right yeah. that he can use that well, he can do it and is it illegal was it improper uh, I think there might be maybe some irony here because one of the things that uh, Comey is famous for talking about is intent <laughs> uh, with Mrs. Clinton and potentially with President Trump as well well as you just said Olivier President explicitly stated what his intent was he said I had this I had the memo I gave it to my buddy at Columbia University to give to the New York Times because my wife and I were leaving town to avoid the press and the goal was special prosecutor or special counsel I mean mission accomplished but that was remarkable candor we also had evidence that he was leaking while he was FBI director one of the things he talked about in testimony today was his interaction with Loretta Lynch and how it made him feel when she he, according to him she has since disputed this uh, told him to lie about the nature of the criminal investigation into Hillary Clinton instead calling it a matter that appeared in the New York Times in April he was still FBI director in April so we have evidence that this leaking didn't just take place once he was out of office but as part of a pattern well let's listen to Jim Comey on the Loretta Lynch and what he alleges she told him. And I want to know, was she going to authorize us to confirm we had an investigation? And she said, yes, but don't call it that, call it a matter. That concerned me because that language tracked the way the campaign was talking about the FBI's work. It gave the impression that the Attorney General was looking to align the way we talked about our work with the way a political campaign was describing the same activity, which was inaccurate. We had a criminal investigation open, but that gave me a queasy feeling. Queasy feeling, Kayla. Yeah, it showed that he didn't think she could be independent in her job. And he said Bill Clinton's meeting with her on that plane is really what set him off. And the fact that she wanted it to be a matter and not an investigation. But to go back to Guy's point, I think what we've seen today with the special counsel a revelation that James Comey made is how destructive Donald Trump's tweets can be to him. Because James Comey said that Donald Trump's tweet about the tapes of their conversations, implying that there are recordings of the, their conversations, is what led him to leak the memo to his friend at Columbia, who then leaked it to the New York Times. And then that's what led to the appointment of a special counsel. And yet, in point of fact, that that statement from Donald Trump, that tweet, came a day after the New York Times had a story about a leak, basically, which was that uh, Donald Trump had demanded loyalty and Comey had demurred. So that he was already leaking prior to the point of Trump tweeting. Did he tell someone about your conversation with the president? I mean, he was sharing information that was damaging to the president. Right, but with it's the different than leaking purpose. a memo. Well, I mean... You, you can argue that, but if it's coming from government documents, which we don't, we still don't even have these memos in the possession of the investigative committees. That's weird. And it is weird that you have random professors at Columbia having information, but not the people's uh, representatives. Well, or they're or not, the reporters. They're not, that, they're not that random, right? It's a friend of James Comey. It's not that random. It's a friend of James Comey. It's one specific memo. You know, I thought actually what, one of the really interesting things about today was um, how much some of the information that we are, we the media, not we here on this panel, uh, are promoting we we already had so for example um, the idea that the the tarmac meeting between Bill Clinton and just and, and, and Attorney General Lynch was the was the thing that generated uh, the 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 James Comey public statements on the Hillary Clinton investigation we knew that that he said that in a hearing uh, in, in in early May um, for me the the really interesting part is we appear to have met again we broadly appear to have missed a very uh, notable moment yesterday when the acting director of the FBI um, refused to characterize his conversation with James Comey and when he was asked by Democratic Senator um, Jack Reed of Rhode Island, are you not characterizing these because you think that the conversation between the president and James Comey either are or could become the subject of a criminal investigation, the acting director of the FBI said yes. Yeah. And that was, to me, a much more notable moment than really anything that happened today in the James Comey testimony. Which is pretty amazing. All right, the breaking news.